Hello my lovely floss tube friends, welcome back. This is a bead with me <laughs> rather than a stitch with me purely because today I am actually beading. It is, what time is it? It's like half seven in the morning on a Sunday morning. I have the house to myself of which I'm going to uh, tell you all that's been going on in my life in the last two weeks and you'll understand why I'm sitting here quite happily on my own enjoying the peace and quiet to do something other than stitching so in my next monthly update you'll see I've done some more so I'd already done the lanterns across the top I'd done I think one of the trees and a partial tree so I've finished another tree admittedly I think I've messed the back stitch up on this one a little bit and I'm fine with that because as far as I'm concerned trees don't all look the same so if my trees look a little bit different I'm down with that I'm very cool with that so I, I don't mind um, and I've started working on the snow across here but the more I look at this piece the more I realize there is so much more left to do in each of these sections one of the biggest bits that I've still got to do is some of the beading so today I thought I would sit quietly on this lovely Sunday morning before the sun gets too warm and before we have our little bit of warm temperatures which allows me to pop outside in the garden um, I thought I would sit and do a spot of beading so I got up nice and early this morning and it is divine it is like seven o'clock on a Sunday morning and no one is awake there's it's only me and the kids anyway which is heavenly so and fudge of course so if you hear a bit of moaning and groaning in the background that's fudge because normally he's very cuddled up with mummy at this time in the morning and he's being sort of made to sit over to the side a little bit and he's not overly best pleased with me right now um but no today i thought i would start doing some of the beading because i don't like to leave all my beading to the end because there is just so much of it um what else have i done on this piece so i've done some more specialty stitches on here um, over the last couple of days I've done this sparkly bit which needs some beads in it as well so I thought you know what let's do some beading today so you all know for those that have watched my videos before about beading I use the invisible thread so you're not gonna see this she says I don't think you can see it hold on where are we oh yeah you can look there it is there's my thread, it's invisible. So as soon as I do this, you're not really gonna see it unless I put it over some of the dark stitching. And to secure that on my needle, I just put a little knot, a tiny, tiny, tiny little knot right here, just so that it doesn't fall off the needle. So I'm all threaded up and I'm all ready to go. So <clears throat> I thought today I would share with you some of the fun and games that's been going on in my life <laughs> because it has been one hell of a two weeks this two weeks you just it's not gone according to plan at all which is not unusual in my life but it's a little more unusual than normal so you all know that on my last video <coughs> excuse me i don't know where the frog in my throat come from as soon as i open my mouth to talk to you all um so you all know in my last video I was talking about oh it looks like we're uh, we're going to be starting our loft conversion so you know there might not be much to update you on and I might be exceptionally busy on the roof so yeah so you know I was thinking you know this is going to be it's going to be a bit difficult to sort of do any stitching because I'm going to be so busy with the loft conversion, well, needless to say, people, the loft conversion is not happening. <laughs> not anytime soon, anyway. So, yeah, it's been... I mean, when I sit and say timing could have been a lot better, it could as far as the loft conversion, but timing as far as us not progressing anything as soon as we would have liked it's probably been a bit of a godsend to be honest so <clears throat> a 
we was about to order the what's known as top hat over here in the UK so because we have such unpredictable weather when you do a conversion over here especially at this time of year and you're going to rip almost all of the roof off we're never brave enough to just take the roof off and hope for the best because you could end up with a flood and actually wrecking the rest of the house um so we was arranging <clears throat> we was arranging for a top hat to be put on which basically is scaffolding all the way around the house and then like what's known as a, like a tin roof so it's basically a big metal structure that they put over the top of the house so that, that way we could take the whole roof off practically oh mixed up so that we could take the whole of the roof off and still be watertight so that you know if the weather turned or there was a problem oh no hold on we have managed to get our threads all hooked up here that's it um, so yeah, so we had this, we were supposed to have been having a metal structure put over the top of the roof. And before we do, because you pay rent on that, so they, they charge you to come in, they charge you to come in and put the top hat on. One, two, three. They charge you to come in and put the top hat on. But then they give you a certain number of weeks to complete your work. And that comes within the cost but then anything after that they charge you like a rentage like a rent a rent fee for using the or for, for any additional weeks that you need to keep the top hat on so the idea is that i think they were giving us um the top hat plus eight weeks so we were giving us yeah two months to complete or at least get watertight again. Once you've got the tiles, the roof tiles back on, it's fine. You can take the structure away. So we were still waiting on just some finalities from the um, <clears throat> the building regulation team and our engineer who done all our calculations. And on the Monday, we was due to ring the scaffolders and say, okay, come in and put the top hat on and the scaffolding so that we could get started. And I'd already said on to, to Hubby, you know, maybe we should do that on the Friday. And he was like, well, I just want to make sure and make sure that we've got everything that we need and make sure that we can get the materials on site before we do that. So I was like, fair play, I'll give you that. So I was like, all right then, well, we'll get that sorted out and then organize for the top hat on the Monday. Darren went into work on the Friday afternoon because he was on the late shift. He went into work and then I got a phone call about six o'clock in the evening saying, I'm really sorry, babe. He said, I'm working on. He said, could be midnight tonight before you see me. So I was like, oh, okay. He had some sort of crisis at work that he had to deal with. So I was like, okay then. And he went, so make yourself comfy. He said, and I'll see you later. Anyway, I'd, I'd made myself sort of comfortable and I, you know, was laying in bed doing a spot of stitching just settling down ready to sort of like go off go off to sleep and all of a sudden hubby's on the phone and you've always got to worry when he's like babe um, are you in bed so I was like well of course I'm in bed why wouldn't I be in bed it's like gone 11 o'clock he's like well he said I think we might need to go to the hospital so I was like we do I'm like, why do we need to go there He's like, well, I might have hurt my foot. So I was like, what do you mean you've hurt your foot? And he went, well, I fell down some stairs at work. So because I'm like, oh, really? Here we go. It's a bit like the man flu. I'm like, oh, he sprained his foot and he thinks he needs to go to the hospital. Anyway, he's... I said, well, where are you? I said, do you need picking up or something? Because obviously if you really hurt yourself, I'm thinking, well, you know, no one in their right mind is going to get in their car and drive or put weight on it if it's that bad. And he was like, well, I'm driving. So what do you mean you're driving? And he was like, well, I'm, I'm driving home now. So I was like, well, I said, it can't be that bad if you can if you can drive with it. And he went, well, I'm sort of driving with the other foot. 
He said, but it is really hurting. So anyway, I'm sort of thinking, yeah, 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 right, okay. So I said, well, look, wait till you get home. We'll have a little look at it. So when he's got come home, obviously, we took his shoe off, had a little look. I couldn't really see anything too much, apart from the fact that his ankle looked like it was swelling up. But he was in an exceptional amount of pain. So I'm like, oh, dear. I was like, all right, then. I said, well, it's down to you. I said, do you really want to be going to A&E, an like accident and emergency here? I said, on a Friday night. Admittedly, we're still sort of in a COVID. It's still COVID here, so I can't imagine it's as busy as it normally is on a Friday night in the in the A and E. But nevertheless, it, it it's always going to be busier on a Friday night. So he said, "Well, I don't know." So I said, "Well, I said because you have got the option that if it's sort of something not too serious, you could just go minor injuries." on Saturday morning I said and that way you'll get seen straight away and they'll probably just strap it for you so anyway the more he's laying there the more he's like something doesn't feel right so I said what do you mean something doesn't feel right of course it doesn't feel right you've hurt yourself and he was like no he said I I really mean something in my foot or leg doesn't feel right so I'm like all right then so I said you want to go A&E so he's like yeah well because of Covid it's no it's still no different here but you can only have one person go in so if you've got someone like Darren who's other than the fact that he can't really walk on his foot is fairly able-bodied and doesn't need assistance he's made to go in on his own so when I've got there it didn't look particularly busy so I'm like well it's not too busy and security outside said no he's got to go in on his own they said but you can park across the road there like in the in the blue bays um and you can park there until seven in the morning like when the hospital officially opens again so i said all right you go in thinking you know they'll just strap his foot and then that'll be it um so i said you go in i said i'll 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 wait out here in the car well needless to say it seemed like it was taking forever so there he is in the hospital by himself Everything always takes forever in the hospital anyway. So you always expect that, you know, you're going to be there for a while. Well, I was so tired because I'd been up since five o'clock in the morning. And bearing in mind now he's like gone midnight at night. That as time ticked on and it got to like, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock. I'm like, what are they saying? So, he's, you know, he's texting me and ringing me from inside the hospital. Um, and he's saying, oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they're doing. So I was like, well, we're here now. Because he's like, maybe I should just leave. And I went, no, no. I said, you're here now. You you know, you've, we've waited hours. You don't leave now, now that you've been there for hours. So I said, you know, just stay put. Get it looked at. I said, and then, then you're done. Well, I was getting so tired that I was like, well, I'm just going to sort of lay back in the chair here. I said, and just like close my eyes for a bit. So I said, but text me as soon as you know anything. Well, this must have been about, I don't know, three, half three in the morning by this point. And I just physically could not keep my eyes open. But my driver's seat was just too uncomfortable. It doesn't lay right back. So I was just like, oh, I'm up. I've got some problems with my hip, which if this video goes on that long, maybe I'll tell you about that as well. But needless to say, I was I was suffering somewhat and I didn't have any tablets with me. So I was like, well, yeah, I was like, I need to stretch out. So I did nothing more than <laughs> lay, like jump into the back of the car and lay down on the back seat. Well, I'd sort of said to him, just text me and let me know what's going on as as things are going on. I said, but I am going to sort of have a little nap. So he was like, all right then, babe. So Chris, I've laid down on the back seat and do not remember a thing after that. It was like literally I was gone, solid gone in the back seat. To all of a sudden waking up to banging on the window. So I'm like, oh no. So I woke up with a bit of a start. Anyway, it's Darren standing there. So I was like, oh, he's done. Cool. Unbeknownst to me, 
I'd been asleep for quite some time. <laughs> so I'd been asleep until I think it was about five o'clock in the morning. Hang on, let's just move you up a little bit. There we go. So it was about five o'clock in the morning. So I've unlocked the doors, opened the door. Anyway, he's got in the car and he's got this plaster cast on his leg. So I'm like, what? What on earth is going on? I said, and he went, I broke it. So I said, you broke what? And he went, well, apparently, he said, I've, I've broke my ankle or like fractured. He said, apparently it's a fracture or something. He said, but they put a back slab on it because of the swelling and said that I'll need to come back. So I was like, oh. And you know when you're like, oh dear God, no. So because we had a few jokes in the car because... This loft conversion of mine, I've been waiting for for nearly 10 years now. Nearly 10 years. And it was either that we didn't have the funds to do it, because it was going to cost a lot of money, or Darren didn't have the time because of work. And then as years have gone on, then it's been, well, it was just never a convenient time to start it because of his racing, because where he races and he's on the teams now, there's certain races that he can't miss. Well, Kirst, most of his race season is all through the summer. So the most obvious and idyllic time to actually do the loft is in the summertime. But every time the summer's here, he can't do it because he's busy racing. So never, needless to say, there's just been, there's been a reason why he can't do it. Year on year. Endlessly. So, the fact that we was in lockdown was the reason that he was like, well, there's no racing. So the fact that there's no racing, he had the time. And obviously we've not gone on holiday, we've not really done anything, so we also had the money to make a start on the loft conversion. So everything was right, you know, with all, all, all necessary arrangements. The only problem that we was having, and this was the hold up, was finding out whether we could actually get our hands on the materials, because a lot of the materials now, it's either that everyone's building because they can't do anything else, so all the home DIY and renovations that are going on. I mean, the builders here are saying, you know, that they're, they're busier now than they've ever been because people obviously haven't spent their money on holidays and going out, so have actually got the money to get all of their jobs done. But the other problem is roof tiles. So roof tiles are really hard to come by. And the particular tiles that we were going with apparently had a 20, a 20, 20 week lead weight and I'm like really 20 weeks I can't wait 20 weeks it'll be spring <laughs> so we'd sort of made some changes and adaptions to suit the fact that we couldn't get our hands on some of the materials but yeah so you know 10 years I've waited for this and I went so Chris the first thing I've said to him in, in a nice way obviously is you'll do anything to get out of building my loft conversion <laughs> I know that sounds like I'm being mean and awful, but it's like, really? Of all the times in the world for you to go and break your leg and do something like that, you would pick the one time where we've made the final decision that we're going to commit and start the loft conversion. So then, Chris, it's like, well, that sort of blows that out of the water because we weren't bringing any builders in. It was me and Darren that was doing it. And maybe the odd, the odd friend with some roofing skills to come in and, and assist. So I was like, well, I suppose it's, it's better that it happened now than, you know, whilst we was in the midst of it. Could you imagine if we had like the top hat on and he'd like ripped half my roof off and then broke his leg? So that, that would have just been like the worst thing ever. So I was like, well, I suppose, you know, if you're gonna do it, now's the time to do it. So I was sitting there thinking, well, you know, he's broke his leg, he knows he's broke his leg. You know, it will take it in his stride. So obviously he now can't work. 
and the fact that it happened at work. So he's like, well, you know, I can't work. I can't put my foot on the floor. So there's no build happening. And the problem is, Darren, in, in all of his lifetime that I've known him, I think he's only ever took... Um, he took a few days off when he had a surgery on his arms. I think he had to take like four days off. Then he went back to work and did, I think, light duties. Other than that, the only other time that I've ever known Darren to take any time off work was when he got like, um, I think it was like gastroenteritis one year. And he was sick, sick. But when you're that sick, you're not moving out of the bed. And he was like that for about, I don't know, three days. And as soon as it was over, he was back to work. So he's never really took any time off work whatsoever. And certainly he doesn't take time off from anything else. Certainly not his racing. So I knew this was going to be a little bit difficult for him, but well did I know it was going to be this difficult for him. So this was on the Friday. So by the time we come home on the Saturday morning, at about 5 o'clock or 5.30, we fell into bed about 5.30 in the morning. We was back up again by about 8 a.m. So we only got like a few hours sleep. And he was like, well, I did say to the boys I was going to go over the racetrack and do some practice with the car, like his little toy racing car. And you know, it's like, I felt really sorry for him because he seemed really, really like upset and depressed with what had happened. So I told him and I said, well, do you want me to drive you over there? Because you can't drive. And he was like, I can drive. And I was like, no, dear, you can't drive. He's like, yeah, I can, I can, I can drive with me other foot. And I was like, no, you can't. I said, if, if you get out, I said, if... If anything was to happen, I said, and you got out your car, I said, with a plaster cast on your leg, I said, your insurance is invalid. I said, because you haven't declared it. I said, so no, you can't drive. So he was grumbling. Because he's like, well, I do drive automatic. He said, I only need one leg. And I was like, yes, but the one leg that you do need is the leg that you've broken. I said, you've done, you broke your right leg. So... So I said, well, it doesn't matter. I said, oh, I'll throw the dog in the car with us. I said, I can walk the dog. I said, and you can play with your toy cars. I went, how long do you want to go for? And he went, oh, only for an hour or two. So I'm thinking, well, it's all right. It's an hour and a half of my life, you know, and then we'll drive back. But bearing in mind that the track is like 40 minutes away. So it's 40 minutes there, 40 minutes back, plus the hour, hour and a half that I said that he can go play with his little toy cars. So, but he was happy with that. So, okay, so we've gone over the track to try and like cheer him up because he was miserable, like super miserable. You know what these men are like? They're not very good at being laid up, sick or ill. Um, ignore the pyjamas, people. <laughs> <laughs> so I sort of turned around and said to him, you know, I, I don't mind taking you. I said, so we'll do that. So, okay, so we've driven over there. But needless to say, people, we was there hours. I say hours, it couldn't have been that long, but it was a good sort of four and a half, four and a half to five hours. Fudge had a whale of a time, admittedly. He was, you know, loving all the sniffing and the charging around the fields and seeing all the people. He loves people. So, but I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to hold it against him. The poor lad's just had like the worst news ever that everything that we thought we was doing, we're not doing and he can't do anything himself because he can't drive anywhere. He can't go to work. So I was like, you know, cutting him some slack and taking him to the racetrack is not, you know, it's no hardship for me, not for one weekend. So then he's chatting away with his friends while we're there. And then he was like, he was saying about racing on Sunday. And he was like, well, you know, he said, and, uh, he said, well, unless tell her, unless tell her, a take me because he calls me Tell, not Teresa. So he said, Unless Tell will bring me. So I was like, Well, what are we talking about now? So he's like, Well, I want to go racing. He said, uh, There's there's a race meet tomorrow. He said, And I really would like to sort of like be part of the race meet. So I was like, Well, I said, Do you expect me to be here all day with you? And he said, Well, he said, That'd be nice. He said, But no, he said, Not if you don't want to. 
he said, like, you know, the boys can help me. So I'm like, okay, well, as long as the boys can help you. So it was agreed that we'd go back on Sunday morning. And I was like, well, what time do you need to come over? And he went, well, I need to be here early. Someone was like, well, what's early? I think he needed to be there for about, I don't know, seven or eight o'clock. And I was like, well, that's not too early. And I said, and then I can leave you here. I said, and I can just come back and pick you up later. I just had to re-thread the needle. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, so it was agreed that I would take him back over on the Sunday with the intention that I would just be dropping him off and then going back to pick him up later because his friends were going to look after him. Let me scoot you down. I can't see what you can see. Probably not a lot. There we go. So the agreement was that I would drop him off, leave him there for the day, and then go back and pick him up. So that was the plan. Because when we've come home on the Saturday night, on the Saturday, like, late afternoon, early evening, he's like, God, my leg really hurts. I went, well, I'm not surprised. I said, I can't imagine that being on the leg, I said, I'm not resting it, is particularly a good idea. Oh, no, 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 they didn't say that I needed to do that. And I was like, of course they didn't. So I was like, but then most people would make the assumption that that is what you should be doing. I said, so, so anyway. The thing is, what you don't realise is, with his little hobby, there is a lot of equipment that is required for him to do the racing and to play with his little toy cars. Well, of course, because he's on crutches and he can't put any weight through the leg whatsoever, Muggins here was made to do all the heavy lifting. And trust me when I say that they don't travel light when they do their racing. <laughs> and I've got an underlining hip problem myself currently so I'm hobbling around trying to sort of lift and load into the car all the stuff on the Saturday so when we've got home all I wanted to do was sit down but obviously I couldn't because Darren needed assistance so by the time I've cooked in something to eat and then you know got his food and his drink to him then he wanted to have a bath because he felt all scummy. So we had the bathing aspect with a broken leg. So by the time I actually got to sit down, I was absolutely shattered. But then he turned around and said, well, I need to go and sort the stuff out to take with us tomorrow. So I said, well, well, what stuff do you need to sort out? And he was like, well, he said, I need to sort out all my bits and pieces. So I said, well, well what do you need me for? And he went, well, because I can't carry anything or lift anything. So I was like, oh. and you know what it's like, you don't want to sort of say no to them, especially when they're all miserable because, you know, the life as they know it is turned upside down and he doesn't cope very well with change in that respect and not being sort of self-reliant and able-bodied. So, Chris, there's me doing all these bits and pieces for him. So, Chris, we fell into bed on Saturday night. So then on the Sunday, I've had to go out, load all the car up, get him in the car get the dog in the car and drive us back over to his racing so we've gone off to racing again and the idea was that I was just going to literally dump him and run because I was like I need to have a restful day well that didn't happen because as soon as I got there it was like well if you can just get this out the car and if you can just do that well I just need this I just need that oh and if you could do this for me you know how it goes so before I know it, and as much as I try to be the, you know, the caring, doting wife, it's like I've never had to do it with him before. And I'm just not very good at it, if I'm honest, because he's a pretty terrible patient anyway. He's, he's the worst patient. I mean, well, he's, he's become very apparent in the last week of just how bad he is. But on the weekend, I was cutting him some slack because I was like, well, it's his first weekend on crutches. So, but I thought, well, you know, once we get to like the normal working week, he'll just settle down and you know, accept what is. Well, I stayed over there for about four and a half hours. And eventually I was like, babe, I really do need to go home. I said, I'll come back and pick you up later. And his mate's like, yeah, don't worry, Teresa, we'll look after him. We, we, we can do like bits and pieces for him. So I left him in their capable hands. 
And Kirst, when I've gone back, the lads are so lovely. They, they actually loaded the car for me so that I didn't have to load all the stuff back up in the car. So they were like really good lads for me. Um, so then we've got home Sunday night. And Darren starts talking about, well, when I get my my walking boot on, then I can, you know, nothing changes. I went, what do you mean when you get a walking boot on? I said, who said anything about a walking boot? He went, well, he said, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna push for a walking boot. So I was like, babe, you broke your leg. I said, if you broke your leg. And he was like, yeah, but, you know, when I go fracture clinic, they might tell me, I've, he said, if I, put, if I tell them I want a, a walking boot, they'll let me have a walking boot. Anyway, needless to say, his calf was really, really hurting on the Sunday. And I was like, well, what do you expect? You've been on your leg all weekend. You've not tried to rest that at all. And he went, they didn't say anything about rest yet. And I was like, no, but they make the assumption that most people do rest things like that. So anyway, all night he didn't get any sleep. His leg was really, really hurting. His calf muscle was really sore. And he was like, I think I need to go to minor injuries. He said, I think there's something wrong with the cast. So what do you mean there's something wrong with the cast? And he was like, well, something's really hurting in my leg. I was like, yeah, because you've been on it all weekend. So, you know, there's me being really unsympathetic. Because <laughs> I'm like, you know what, this is, this is getting boring already. And he was like, well, and I was like, all right. I said, I'll drop you off, but I'll have to drop you and run because I'm working. So, okay, so he's gone back over to the hospital. This is at like, he wanted to be over there at the crack of dawn, like first thing in the morning, because he's like, if I leave it till later in the day, it's just going to be super busy and it'll be there for hours. Well, as it was, I left him there at eight o'clock in the morning. And I think I eventually went and picked him up at about, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon, because that's how long it all took. But I was getting endless, I, I had to come back home because I had, um, I was working. So I needed to just, and I can't go in with him anyway. So it's like, well, I'll drop you and run. So anyway, it's become apparent that whilst he was, you know, he was back in there, he told him that his calf muscle was hurting. So because they've cut the calves back off, then they've looked at his leg. And then he's spoken to a consultant and the consultant turned around and said, well, what, what blood thinners did they put you on? So he said, blood thinners. He said, no one's put me on any blood thinners. He said, why would I be on blood thinners? And he went, well, he said, because you've got a traumatic break. So Dale's like, no, the man said that I just had a, uh, I had a small fracture. He said, but he couldn't see where the fracture was. He said, but the consultant had said that there was a fracture on the Friday night. Anyway, consultant sent him off more x-rays. Then it's worked out, they've shown him the x-rays of his leg and they sort of said, no, it's not a little fracture, it's, it's a big fracture. It's a, it's a clean break, but it's classed as a traumatic, or like an unstable fracture or unstable break. So Darren's, envis Darren's vision of, of, you know, a week or so of, of, a, of a cast and then being put into one of those walking moon boot things sort of went out the window really quickly. But on top of that, they sort of said, you should have been put on blood thinners on the Friday night. So then they were sort of saying, our concern is that the pain that you're in with your calf could be that there's a blood clot. So I was like, oh dear. So next thing you know, when I've picked him up, he's got yet again another cast on his leg. Oh, hold on, where am I? One, two, three. He's got another cast on his leg which obviously didn't put him in the best mood because I think he was sort of pushing that he could just wear a moon boot so that he could take it off to take a bath and, you know, because he said, like, he said, well, I could get weight through my leg. And I was like, yeah, but just because you could get some weight on your leg doesn't mean that you should have the weight on your leg. Or well, needless to say, he ended up with injectable, injectable blood thinners for a blood clot in his leg and another plaster cast, and he'd spent the whole day at A&E. So he was not a happy bunny when he came home. But when he's come home, obviously that he's, he's needed to put his leg up, because where he's at the hospital, they don't put you on a bed, they sort of keep you in the waiting area. So he's had his leg down again all day. So needless to say, his leg was sore again on the Monday. And sore legs and guys that are not used to sitting down doing nothing, He's not really a good combination. So he has been like my worst patient ever. And then I think he went back to the hospital again. I 
think it was Wednesday or Thursday this week. Um, and they done an ultrasound scan on him, on his leg, to check for the blood clot. Um, and then they put a um, fiberglass cast on his leg. Uh, so at least it's a bit more lightweight, it's not so heavy. But it didn't make him overly happy because he was really hinging on this moon boot type thing. But the problem is, is it's the typical, the typical man thing that he's, he's the sort of person that never sits down. And he's never really home. Well, you know that because I often say to you, you know, I'm, I have the weekend to myself. So it's very rare that Darren isn't either busy doing racing or at work or not at the gym. So he's always out and he doesn't sit and watch TV. He can't sit down for more than sort of an hour without having to get up and do something. So all of a sudden making himself incapacitated and, unbe and being unable to do anything for himself he has just turned into like your worst patient ever. But it amazes me because I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, you're asking me to do, tell, can you just do this? Tell, can you just help me do that? Tell, tell, tell. So there's all these things that he wants to do. But I'm like, well, look, babe, I appreciate that, you know, it's an inconvenience for you right now because, you know, you're not used to this. I said, but I'm having to do everything. So, you know, just sit there and do nothing you know watch tv you know we'll get you an xbox if we have to you know and you can sit and play xbox or something like that but no it's not good enough for him so then he sat around and said oh well i think you're getting rid of me the weekend so i said i am so he said yeah the boys are going off racing like away away he said and i'm gonna go with them i went well how are you gonna do that i said apparently you can't do anything without me having to do everything for you i said which so I said, how's that going to work? So he said, well, you know, the lads will help me. So I was like, well, do you think that's a good idea? He went, yeah, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. Anyway, it gets me out of your hair and you won't have to do stuff for me, which means you get a weekend to yourself. So I was like, well, I'm not going to say no to that. But again, it's the whole... So on Friday this week, I was thinking, thankfully, I'm getting rid of him Saturday. All I've got to do is drive him to Stansted, up where Stansted Airport is. He wasn't going on a plane, but that's where the guy was that was going to drive them. So he turned around and sort of said, you just need to drop me off there. He said, and I'll go with the lads. So I've worked all week and I've been the dog walker, the cleaner, the cook, the laundry washer, the taxi service the bring food and drink for me can you get me this can you get me that helping him bathe <laughs> as well as do my day job and and sort of work from home but being at home made it even worse because it's not like I could just sort of say right okay you need to look you know fend for yourself so I'm at work because I'm here it'd just be like tell any chance you could just do this for me or just do that for me. So you, you see where I'm going with this. He's been a nightmare. And it's all been, oh, woe is me. But yet he doesn't really do anything to help himself. As far as, you know, rest the leg. Make yourself feel better. And he's really quite ingenious normally. Because he's, you know, he's an engineer. He normally finds ways around. I mean... I think the problem is he's never really been on crutches in his adult life. He was on crutches a lot when he was younger, but then as a kid, you've got different priorities, haven't you? You're quite happy to sit there and play Xbox. But being a full-grown adult, all the things that he likes doing is our action boy, you know. So, I mean, he sort of said, like, he spoke to the consultant, and the consultant said he could still go to the gym. So I said, well, how, how's that going to work? And he went, well, as long as I don't use my leg. He said, I can still train everything else. I'm like, well, all right then. So he said, but um, if you could just drop me off at the gym and then come back and pick me up. And he said, whilst you're doing that, you can walk the dog, can't you? So you just see where I'm going with this. It's like, Trees is running around like a lunatic and putting herself out for him to do all the things that he wants to do so that it's as if like nothing's really changed for him. But that's fine if you don't have to rely too much on other people to do the things that you want to do. So... The fact that I've actually got a dodgy hip myself and I'm hobbling around, it just got to the point that I was like, really? 
So it's okay for you because you can't move around because you're on crutches, but you'll watch your wife hobble around and do all these things just because you can't sit down on the sofa for five minutes. That's sort of how it felt. So it was, um, yeah, needless to say, there was a few sort of raised eyebrows and raised voices that went on because, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the most patient of people when people don't try and help their self. And he just wasn't trying to help himself. But it amazed me. So when someone's there, it's as if he's like, oh, well, I can't do this, darling, by myself, and I can't do that. But when he was outside and he was in his barn and he was sorting his racing stuff out to go away, and he wanted to drag it all out on the deck in the sun, I went off to, a, to an appointment that I had for my hip, and when I come back, he'd managed to get all of this stuff out of the barn, across the patio, up some steps, and up on the table on the deck. And he was sitting out there with it, you know, with his, with just his shorts on, sunbathing, and working on his little toy car stuff. So I'm like, well, you obviously are capable because you did all that all by yourself without any help from me. <laughs> But the minute I turned back up, he's like, oh, tell if you could just sort of do this and if you could just sort of do that. So, yeah. Needless to say, I was extremely, extremely pleased to be rid of him yesterday morning. But again, it's like, you know, I had to be up at, I don't know, quarter past five in the morning to drop him off at Stansted. And then... Although he sort of said, I'll get a weekend to myself. By the time I dropped him off and then got back here, that's like over an hour of driving. And then I've come back and then obviously I've still got washing and housework and all the things that I haven't done that I should have done. All those things that really I should have, I should have had the opportunity to do through the week that I haven't had the opportunity to do through the week. Now needs to be done this weekend whilst he's not here. And then at some point later on today, I need to go all the way back up to Stansted to go and pick him up again. So it just seems to be one of those, you know, it never rains, it pours. And he is like the worst patient ever. And I'm not a particularly great caring, well, I, I do care. I mean, I care that he's broke his leg, but that whole sort of, looking after his every need I'm not so I'm not too great at because it's like well if you was a good boy you know and you rested your leg and you did everything that you're supposed to do you know and you helped yourself a little bit then I would be totally fine but the fact that he doesn't do any of those things and it's almost as if he's like sabotaging himself but then he expects me to to be running around after him, doing all of his bits and pieces for him, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a lot of patience for him in that respect. Because it's like, well, you're not helping yourself. So I don't see why I should be keep putting myself out for you when you're not trying to help yourself. So yeah, it's been an awful, awful week. Apart from today. And yesterday afternoon. So yesterday afternoon, I, I dropped him off. Then I had to take mum to go and have her flu jab done. So I took mum to have her flu jab done. And then it was a bit windy yesterday, but it was nice and warm. So I said to mum, you know, we sort of stood outside. We we, we done some um, deadheading in the garden. But it was one of those, you know, that, that comfortable silence where we had a couple of little chitty chats but other than that we sort of gardened in in the peace and quiet it was really quite nice and then we both sort of I don't know we both sort of said right we're done about the same time I think mum was going to go and have a little lay down and I was like yeah I'm going to go and sit in the living room and do some stitching but the sun was beaming through the through the skylight so I couldn't even do any of my stitching 
not in here anyway so I was like do you know what I'm gonna just go and lay down on the bed so I lay down on the bed and had a afternoon of TB and lounging and it did my hip the world of good my hips been so so sore so I probably did myself a favor there so for me and my hip, I mean, this is, what's, this is sort of what makes matters even worse. My hip has been really bad all week. Well, for the last, the last month or so, I noticed it getting a lot worse. Um, but I went to a consultant myself last week. And I've still got to go for an MRI this Wednesday on it. But from the x-rays and sort of the examination he's basically he's basically said there is really only two options I think for you now Teresa he said the first option the first option is that I have a temporary fix which would be to have some injections in my hip which if I'm lucky might give me I don't know a month or two months of sort of uh, relief from it but he said it is very temporary or the other option at the moment unless the MRI shows something else the only other option at the moment is a full hip replacement so it never rains does it it always pours so I'm like well how on earth am I supposed to help my husband because I'm sort of sitting there thinking well you know once Darren's Darren will be on crutches for six weeks and then you know maybe a a few more weeks of sort of like just physio and, and walking on it and I was thinking and then maybe we might start the loft conversion so you know the loft conversion was just sort of like well maybe it's just on hold for now not not happening until next year so I was quite hopeful but then with my hip I was like well I know how am I how am I going to help him when he turned around and said well the only other option is a hip replacement and I'm like well then that sort of Darren would be a one-man band if he decided that he wants to do the loft conversion. And plus, if I'm having a hip surgery or a hip replacement, I can't imagine that I'm going to want all that goes with the building works if I'm feeling a little bit, you know, rough myself, if you know what I mean. So yeah, so it's like the more the more I'm sort of seeing and feeling this, the more it's like this is just not going according to plan. This was never the plan. The plan was we made the decision to do it. And the plan was that we was going to, you know, do it together and get it done this year before the bad weather kicks in and now now I don't even see it happening because even if Darren gets off his crutches anytime soon and he's able because that's the thing because when they said that he thought he'd damaged his ankle but in actual fact he's broke his fibula the bone behind the big tibia he's broke that so so, and it's halfway up his leg. So it is his leg is broke rather than, um, which in some respects I suppose is a good thing because it's better that he, it's better that he break his, break his leg than to have broke the ankle. And secondly, they do actually say from a recovery perspective, you're better to break a bone than you are to like damage your tendons, your ligaments and those sorts of things. So I, you know, at the moment I keep sort of saying to him, well, you know, look at the plus sides here. There are some. <laughs> I don't think Darren thinks so. <laughs> I certainly don't think so because he is like the worst patient in the world. <laughs> but I think, to be honest, I wouldn't be quite so bad with him being such a terrible patient if I was feeling totally on my game. But because I'm hurting at the moment constantly... So if I'm sitting down, it hurts. If when I try and stand up, it hurts. And then when I'm walking, it hurts. So it's more of a hobble. 
So I'm hobbling around, and, and then obviously I've got my husband going, to hell, can you just do this for me? Can you just do that for me? And I'm like, really? You really want me to do that? I mean, even to the gardening. I mean, that's how bad my hips got. Although I'll go out and do a spot of deadheading, you know, the, the, whereas I'd go out with gusto, I just haven't got it in me. I mean, even like mowing the lawn. And instead of sort of like bending over to sort of do weeding, I can't because my hip, I have to sort of get on all fours on the floor and sort of crawl along the floor because I can't bend down and get to the floor or, you know, do weeding. And I can't crouch because my hip doesn't like that position either. So it's, yeah, it's really a... Uh, God, if anyone had told me what was coming my way, you know, I'm sort of sitting there thinking, but I've... I know I'm older, but I'm, I'm not that old. Well, not that old, that makes that sound disrespectful to older people. But, you know, most people of a certain age, or well, there are a propensity of people of a certain age that are likely to need a hip replacement in their lifetime. Because, well, because you're older, but I'm sort of sitting there thinking, but I'm not even 50 yet. I'm not even 50 and I'm having a hip replacement. I mean, I always knew that it was sort of on the cards because I had hip surgery, didn't I, a few years ago. In fact, how long ago was that? I think that was... five or six years ago. Maybe it wasn't that long. I don't know, it was that long ago. Yeah, it must have been. About five years ago. And he did say to me then, when I had that surgery, you'll get five five to ten years out of that hip. So I must admit, the consultant was pretty right. He knew what he was talking about when he, when he did that. So I suppose I shouldn't really be surprised, but it still doesn't make me feel particularly great about the thought of being as young as I am and needing to have a, some sort of hip replacement. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the MRI will show something different, which is what I'm rather hopeful for, but the consultant hasn't instilled me in confidence with that yet. So, where was I? Oh yeah, there. I'm loving the beads, people. Look. Look at that. Just makes such a difference. All of a sudden, there'll be more beads on there. Been waiting, to, you know, when you're sort of sitting there thinking, I really must do some of the beading because I don't want to leave it all to the last minute. Hold on, I see where I'm at. Where did I get to? Down there. Yeah, I, I didn't want to leave it all to the end. I never do. Beading is one of those things that, especially on a piece like this where there's so much of it, I'm like, no, because it will just take forever. I'll get all the stitching done and think, yeah, I'm done. But actually, you're not done. So I'm like, no, and I can't. I like to do it as I go, so that there's just not so much of it at the end. Let me just tie this in a little knot. Good old invisible thread, so invisible. I can't see it to tie it. It's like a feeling process. Birdies. Fudge is snuffling around next to me. He's doing okay. He enjoys his little walks every day. But we've given we've been given the news that he's in full heart failure now, so he's on all sorts of tablets. He's on his heart I mean he's always been on the heart medication for a while now, but he's now on water tablets as well, so but he's doing all right, aren't you, Fudge? You're doing all right. Right, let's stick that back through there. Okay, where did I just put that? So if we're down here, we're getting there, people. Absolutely love working on this. And there's times that I sort of, I mean, also I say I love working on it. I'm, I'm hating the trees right now. The trees and the back stitch of the trees. I'm not loving those. I'll be completely honest. I'm like, I'm done with trees. And there's so many more trees to go. But 
then when I've sort of like, because you sit there thinking, oh, you know, not long to go and it's going to be done because it is looking so close, but it's actually so far away. Like when you look at sort of how much more beading there is to go, I mean, I've only actually done these two top corners. I've still got the bottom corners to do. So when you sort of look at it like that, it's like actually, there is a whole lot left. And I think, who was it? I think it was Tina or some someone, someone on YouTube was like, have you not got her done yet? And I'm like, you know what? She's gonna have to be a focus piece. And of course the camera ran out. So someone on, I think it was Instagram or YouTube, I can't remember now, turned around and said, are you ever gonna get it finished, this Chatelaine of yours? And I'm like, oh, you'd think so. Like, maybe we should make it like a, you know, if, I mean, I keep saying I'm gonna make it a focus piece and I do try, but because at the moment I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again, I wanna go off and do something else. So I don't ever, you know, focus. <laughs> so I would like to say, maybe I'll make it part of my 2021 plans to have this finished by 2021. <gasps> Should I dare say such a thing? You just know by saying something like that, I'm sort of jinxing myself. But Maybe if I was to actually say it out loud and make a thing of it, it would make me sort of really focus on it to get it done. Because I'm going to be absolutely over the moon when this is on my wall somewhere and I just get to sit and look at it and see all the sparkle and actually have it completed. I mean, I don't even unroll it. I can't even remember what's at the bottom. I mean, I know that it's a Mandela, so that it's, it's sort of equal on all sides, but as far as how much is left to go down there, how much I've still got left to do, I'm not sure I can remember. Because it's been forever since it's been unrolled. It's sort of, I see this same section all the time. I think the only time I unravel this is when I'm showing you on my updates. But I don't actually stop and look at it myself to really sort of like look to see how much is left to be done. Not sure I want to do that either. I don't want to be sitting there thinking, oh wow, look at all that, that might put me off. Maybe it's best I don't know how much is left to be done. <laughs> okay, so we've done that little bit of border and now, come on, down you go. Let's just get this last bead in here. There. Rather happy with that, people. Well, I mean, I've still got all beads to put in around this edge here, right in this um, metallic area, and there's all beads to go in this section. So yeah, there's there's still a lot to do, and that's without. That's without sort of looking at, I mean, this whole gate still, this, this whole side. So that gate's already been beaded. This whole gate still needs to be beaded. All here needs to be beaded. Beads on top of the lanterns need to be done. Yeah, there's still a lot of work. Still a lot of work, but I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the beading. And I'm happy that I got off my chest all the hassle that's been going on with my glorious husband. Love him. You just gotta love him, haven't you? They're, they're not great patients. Well, some of them are, I suppose, but mine definitely not. He's definitely a home, not a homeboy. 
So the fact that he's been incapacitated and being made to do things that he really doesn't like does make him a bit grumpy as well. But then having him grumpy is now making me grumpy. <laughs> So yeah, so I, when I said to you I was enjoying my beading and stitching and the tranquil peace and quiet this morning, with the thought of possibly, you know, stitching for the rest of the day or worst case scenario, pop into the garden and just do a spot more deadheading and maybe sit on the deck in the sun. If, if the clouds burn off, that would be nice. But yeah. Oh. At least I feel like I've actually been productive and I've actually got something done and I've chatted with you all. So thank you so, so much for putting up and listening to my family woes. See, I actually did something without telling you what I was doing and still talk at the same time. <laughs> but I must admit, the beading is a lot easier because it's, it's, there's no counting involved. I didn't need to count to do this. So, but yeah. So I think I will now go off and make myself a nice cup of coffee and either do a bit more beading or get myself washed and dressed and go in the garden. And I've still got a ton of housework to do. You know what that's like. The housework never goes anywhere. So I could do some housework as well. But do you know what? I might not because I really am not feeling the love for housework since as I do actually have me time so I hope you've had me time and that you sat and done something that you thoroughly enjoyed doing whilst listening to me rambling on about my unpleasant life over the last week or so. <laughs> but I'm still very positive. I, I am a positive person. You know, things could always be a lot worse. I'm just not very good at having my husband around when he's a grouch and when he's unable to do things for himself he's quite needy I don't do needy he's never been needy in his life and now all of a sudden I need to sort of adjust to a needy husband so yeah that's the reason that I'm grouching so on that note people I'm going to go off and make a cup of coffee and uh, thank you for listening to me and thank you for for just being you you're all lovely and no doubt you'll all be sending me lovely comments of of support or you know stop moaning and whinging trees are about your husband it could always be a lot worse you know I get that so but I thank you in advance I do love to I do love to read the comments the comments can be hilarious sometimes I just sit here chuckling to myself at things that people write to me but thank you so so much so I'm gonna head off now so until next time people bye bye for now <laughs>